The emotional environment we grow up in has a way of sticking with us into adulthood unless we work on changing it. A very common unhelpful emotion many of us carry around from childhood is shame and a sense of feeling worthless and unlovable. In this video, I want to explain what we do as adults that keeps us stuck in and emotionally addicted to shame so that you can work on letting go of it piece by piece. Hey everyone and welcome back or welcome to Becoming an Expert at Self-Leadership. I'm Micah, I'm a psychologist. And in the past few weeks, I've been discussing emotional addictions to painful emotions, ways we keep coming back to the same painful place in life without realizing how we are orchestrating that, how we're recreating the pain from our childhood. Today, I want to focus on the emotion of shame. Shame goes along with and is connected to thinking that you are unworthy of love, affection, attention, and belonging. We feel it in moments when we fear that some of our defectiveness has become visible to another person or group of people. The sense of being defective and ashamed of who we are originates in childhood from the way that we were treated by our family and primary caregivers. If you have a lot of shame about who you are as a person, it's likely that there was someone in your family that was very critical of you, disapproving, maybe even rejected you. You made the experience that when you opened up and shared something about yourself, about your authentic self, an inclination, an interest, a like, a dislike, a thought, that that was met with criticism, disapproval, maybe you were made fun of, or degraded in some other way. It's likely that your strengths and talents weren't noticed and appreciated as much and that your weaknesses were noticed and dissected in an exaggerated way. You were also made to feel ashamed about things about you that weren't any weakness at all, that were just something that was different about you different from the rest of your family or the way your parents wanted you to be. So shame and the sense of defectiveness don't require actual weaknesses or defects to be present at all. This is also about the way you were treated by your family independently from your strengths and weaknesses. And naturally, any form of abuse also leads to a sense of not being worthy of a better treatment in children. And once someone has developed this kind of a self-image, once shame has become such a prominent emotion, they usually keep it into adulthood. Not only that, they contribute to keeping it alive and intact. And in this way, we hold ourselves captive in our past. But it can also be a powerful opportunity to change learn, grow, and develop a new and different emotional baseline. This change process starts by becoming aware of the ways we repeat and reenact our childhood shame patterns, ways we keep ourselves emotionally addicted to shame. A childhood shame pattern affects the way our brain filters events, what your brain allows you to notice, what you feel is normal and to be expected, the way you talk to yourself, what you notice about yourself, and who you're drawn to as friends and romantic partners. If you were heavily criticized and devalued as a child, it's likely you will reenact this pattern in one or more of the following ways. Believing critical thoughts about yourself and discounting positive thoughts and perceptions. Criticizing yourself habitually in front of other people. Misconstruing other people's well-meaning behavior as 
a sign that they actually don't like you. Being drawn to partners and friends that demote and criticize you and by being critical of your companions and children. The last two are probably the most confusing ones. Why does shame make us feel drawn to partners and friends that are critical of us? It's because they confirm our self-image. The self-image of being defective and unworthy of love is painful in itself, but the confirmation of any self-image feels good. Our psyche loves that consistency. So out of our psyche's drive for consistency, it makes us feel most excited about and feel the most chemistry with people that confirm our self-image. And in the case of an emotional addiction to shame, those are people that trigger shame in us, as painful as that is. And what about perpetuating shame by criticizing your companions and children yourself? Why would someone who has experienced the pain of being devalued, why would they continue in that cycle? Well, for one, not everyone does, but it is likely. It could be because that's what they learned about how the world works and maybe they even think they're being helpful that this is necessary for someone to grow up well it could also be because it's their way of feeling better about themselves if someone criticizes someone else in that moment they can feel superior and that's how shame gets passed on through generations. And lastly, it could also be out of a mistrust for anyone who sticks around because based on the self image of being unworthy, someone sticking around doesn't make sense. Something must be wrong with them if they're involved with me and they don't leave even after having gotten to know me. So a major way of stepping out of the pattern of feeling defective and being emotionally addicted to shame is by discontinuing your own degradation. This is about the way you talk to yourself, the way you see yourself, the ability to perceive your strengths and accept yourself with your imperfections and weaknesses. And it continues into your relationships and dialing down the degradation that may be happening there. Letting people know that you won't be accepting it any longer and stopping any degradation you may be inflicting onto others. Entering into relationships that are loving, accepting, and appreciative of you may feel unnatural at first. It may feel like there's not as much chemistry there because your shame pattern makes you feel the strongest chemistry with people that aren't good for you. Turning over a leaf in existing relationships will also require practice. Practice accepting compliments, love and affection without cringing, without rejecting it. Practice feeling in sync with that, feeling like it makes sense that there's this person there who's genuinely interested in you, who wants to love you. Allow that inkling that that might make sense based on who you are and based on them having seen the real you. Allow that inkling to grow, expand, and take up space in you. So far I've talked about the dynamic of reenacting the experience of being degraded, devalued, and criticized. And there is a second big way we keep ourselves addicted to shame that I want to address, and that is hiding our real self behind a role and mask. This starts out as a protective mechanism in childhood. If a child 
shows something about its real self and that is criticized, devalued, degraded, laughed at, it'll stop doing that and only show things that it thinks other people want to see. And it may even put on a show of being someone it's not. And this sticks around. Most of us have this to some degree, this hiding behind a mask and armor and imitating what we think others want to see. And what this does is it keeps our shame alive. Because we can't experience the acceptance and emotional intimacy of being loved for our real self. Others can't love our real self if we don't show it to them, if we don't allow them to come close. Also, this has us living in the constant fear that our authentic self may slip out when we're not careful and expose our feared defectiveness. There's so much that goes along with this mask. There are so many ways we keep others at arm's length and ourselves lonely because we fear that our authentic self is too defective to be loved. And this has degrees of severity too. I think it's worthwhile for anyone to reflect on this and to practice showing up more as themselves in close relationships and to allow themselves to experience the overwhelming and moving intensity and support of authentic connection and acceptance. That person from your childhood who first instilled this sense of defectiveness in you wasn't able to love you for you, not because of a fault of yours, but because of their own situation. And the shame you carry will start feeling less real to you once you allow trustworthy people to come close and see the real you. When you experience how they love and accept you, for you, including the things you perceive as weaknesses and flaws. You can stop being so afraid of getting exposed. This idea that there's something fundamentally off-putting about you that shouldn't be exposed. It's not real. It's a concoction. Life can start feeling a lot better when we dare to look at contact and work on the deeper painful emotions we usually try so hard to avoid. In contact with these emotions, you can understand what you're doing to reenact them and keep them alive. And that enables you to start changing your behavior, which will change what feels natural to you. And your psyche will experience more positive emotions as consistent with your self-image. For now, give yourself a hug inside and if you want also outside, remember to subscribe for more content like this. Check out my weekly self-leadership email newsletter. Till next time, take care and remember your sense of global defectiveness is a fabrication. It's not based on facts.